Hello, everybody. This is Sir Monch, and this presentation is about 21st century learning and the skills that are part of this model, this framework of learning. This presentation is part of the subject building and enhancing new literacies across the curriculum. This presentation is long. You bear with me. This used to be part of two chapters, but I decided this time to just merge them together into a single introductory chapter for the subject. Now, I'll begin my presentation with a post from LinkedIn. I don't know if you have LinkedIn in case you have. This is from Fourth Wall posted two weeks ago. They made a post regarding Filipino Gen Z fresh graduates feeling so much pressure. Okay? Na ay pressure daw ma-feel ng mga bagong graduates. On sa man nga pressure. The great expectations for Filipino Gen Z graduates. Ang reality karon sa Philippines, no, at least based on the data from PSA collected in November 2023, nag-decrease ang atong unemployment rate. Buti pa sa botana, dag high job openings, dag high job opportunities for Filipinos. And syempre, again, that's good news, no, for fresh graduates. Daghan sila ay pwedeng applyan dili kaayo ma-feel ang danger of unemployment. Okay? The trend is going towards lessening of unemployment rate. However, despite the favorable job environment, ang Gen Z graduates daw still feel so much pressure. And kaninga pressure is rooted from great expectations. Great expectations ng parents. Ang Filipino parents, normal sa atong culture ang mag-set ng taas kaayo na expectations and kasagaran, vague na mga expectations. In a 2022 research study, ang Filipino parents, ang view nila sa education is Uh, they want their children to achieve whatever successful outcome after they graduate. So you have here statements like, ang gusto ko lang naman makapagtapos sila ng walang bagsak. Pag nakapagtapos sila kasi, maa-achieve na nila yung lahat ng gusto nilang gawin. Another statement, as a parent, syempre education ang pinaka-importante. Kapag nakapag-graduate na sila, hindi sila mahihirapan maghanap ng trabaho. And lastly, iba pa din kasi kapag graduate ka at may quality education, lahat ng opportunities lalapit sa iyo. Okay? I'm sure we're not strangers to remarks like these, no? Kay na ay I'm sure giina encourage pod mo sa inyong parents na mo eskwela kay makatrabaho so si siya sa success para mo gaan ang kinabuhi and asa man ning gikan why is it that our parents set such great expectations accordingly matrace siya sa atong dark past kadtong gi colonize kita ng spaniards kay sa kana nga panahon ang social mobility was restricted tungod kay, syempre, we were discriminated by the Spaniards. And ang lantaw sa mga early Filipinos during the time of Spaniards when they colonized the country, baba ragyud nga klase ng mga tao, inferior kaayo. And the early Filipinos saw that university education was the avenue for them para ma-elevate ang ilang status sa society. So that's why katong mga ilustrados apil na si Dr. Jose Rizal nag-strive giyod nga makaeskwela sa university para ma-prove na mali na yung mga Spaniards. No? So, mauto, nadayato na batasan nga need giyod maka-graduate sa college. Need giyod maka-graduate sa college. But take note, Here's the reality. 
the reality nowadays is employers look for more than just a degree. They also look for soft skills. In a talent report released by LinkedIn in 2021, 95% of companies in the Philippines are willing to hire anybody as long as they possess the following skills. Communication, strategic thinking, ability to work in teams, problem solving. Kung sa may bote pa sa bot, ane, dili gyud mo lang tao sa um, sa degree, sa, sa academic degree, kung um, kung unsay imong natapos. Siguro, ang uban, mga specialist na mga positions, kinahangla na akay degree, but beyond that, dili sila mo stop paglantaw sa academic degree. Mulantaw sila ng soft skills. Okay? And in this lecture, you will see that these soft skills are 21st century skills. Okay? So, unsa may effect ani daw sa Gen Z na mga graduates? They feel frustrated, they feel they feel anxious and they feel disappointed. Kay kasagaran sa ila maglisod paghanap ng trabaho. Kay feeling nila nakagraduate na sila, sure higher na. Pero pagka-graduate, sige nang apply ng trabaho, pag interview dili katubag. Dili maka-elaborate, dili maka-explain, walay proper na communication skills, or kung na-hire, walay batasan, masipogon, unable to work in teams, unable to form, you know, unable to take part actively in collaborative teams. So, mauna ang effect na na ay suffering, no? mag-suffer sa mental health. Tungod kay, na ay gap na ay gap na na ay expectation na makahuman pag graduate sure higher pero again as what i presented earlier the reality today is dili lang degree ang importante yes important siya in many aspects of the world of work pero dili garantiya na makagraduate ana ah, makatrabaho ka kung na ay degree ang garantiya diha is kung naa kay degree tarong jud ka nga tarong na position imong makuha if you possess 21st century skills or soft skills such as the following communication strategic thinking ability to work in teams and problem solving okay so i hope i was able to set the tone for the presentation for this lecture video in this lecture video, we'll cover two major um, topics, 21st century learning and 21st century skills. In this first cluster of topics, basically our conversation will be about the 21st century learning as the knowledge age and the importance of changing the way we deliver education, changing the way how we view the manner of educating our children. And in the second part of our presentation, we'll cover frameworks that have been published to help us understand and categorize 21st century skills or soft skills. We will end this with a bit of presentation regarding the Matatag curriculum, which is now up for pilot implementation next school year, school year 2024 and 2025. So let's begin. As shared by Richard Riley in the late 1990s, Richard Riley was Secretary of Education in the America of the United States. He mentioned this popular line. He said this popular line, we are currently preparing students for jobs that don't yet exist using technologies that haven't yet been invented in order to solve problems we don't even know our problems yet. What does this mean? Ang pasabot ane, the world is uncertain. 
The world is changing every day. The next day, the next week, there are new inventions, there are problems that are present mm -hmm. that we are not even aware yet. And so because of that nature of reality, we need to educate our children for such uncertain world. Okay, that brings us to the 21st century as knowledge age. So before, we're very much familiar with how the world behaves. We follow the industrial age value chain. Nagbase kita sa production, industries, companies, like kaning mag-produce ng unsana na mga produkto diha. Na the value chain would proceed from extracting resources, manufacturing, assembly, marketing, distribution, product and services. Pero karon nag-change na siya because we have the knowledge age value chain wherein magsugod ang pagproduce ng services and product sa data and then mahimo siyang information, knowledge and then pag-develop ng expertise. And once na anay expertise, maoy i-market and ang economy is pretty much a service-oriented economy. Okay? So, sa una, there was heavy reliance on product, industrial product. No? Pero karon na anay heavy reliance on services, on talents, on expertise. The knowledge age means we don't need people who are muscular, strong and kakayanan sa pag-lift ng mga unsarakandiha sa mga industries, no? technological industries. Ang importante na karon are knowledge workers. Knowledge work is the kind of work that can be done anywhere by anyone as long as na asay expertise, na asay digital tools. Na ay cellphone, na ay laptop, and na ay internet connection. Also, aside from the reality of the 21st century as the age of knowledge, the 21st century also sees various realities. In some of the reality, number one, globalization. Interconnected na ang several countries as if countries don't have borders. Second, there is growing disparity in the world between rich and poor, leading to social tension, extremism, even war, and a less safe world for everybody. Okay, you can see the news, ang bombing sa Gaza, ang unsapay mga dangers diha in the corner ang mga pag-ilog-ilog ng territories, mag-create ng tension among countries, no? as if there's competition for limited resources. Also, ballooning world population, I think this is a reality that we are all seeing na nagkadaghan ang mga tao sa kalibutan, dili lang sa Pilipinas. This figure will exceed 9 billion by 2050. So you can just figure out or speculate how it will look like for us, no? Especially kung ato ka sa Manila. If you have gone to Manila, grabe na ang traffic dito kaayo. Dili mabangbang. And kung walay improvements na mahitabo, mas mahimo, gajong miserable ang kinabuhi dito. Another increasing consumption of the Earth's material and energy resources. And last, climate change. Pollution. In order to produce expert knowledge workers for the 21st century, considering these global challenges, we need an educational system to produce these knowledge workers. So in short, ang pag-educate, ang pag-produce nato ng graduates, no, or even ang kaning sakuan lang no sa elementary education or secondary education, ang atong students dapat again number one ready sa knowledge work, number two ready 
to handle the various challenges and problems that the world is currently facing. Education becomes the key to economic survival in the 21st century. Pero, given that reality, there is this so-called 21st century skills gap. Na ay mga students makagraduate, na sila ay degree, grabe ka proud, na ay tarpaulin, nagletsyon, kaya nakagraduate, but poor ang oral and written communication. Poor ang critical and problem-solving thinking skills. Walay professionalism and work ethic. Unable to work in teams. Unable to use various technologies. And even, walay leadership. No? Very sad. Masipogon, tagaw, walay, you know, wala initiative to take some leadership. The competitiveness and wealth of corporations and countries magdepende siya sa well-educated workforce. Emphasis on well-educated. Kay ang pasabot ana bati na po sa akong presentation kaina sa kantong infographics from LinkedIn, ang well-educated is ang well-educated na workforce is kanang workforce or people nga ready ma-employ na ay kanina mga skills. Okay? Kay, mauna ang necessary. Mauna ang important for us to survive, to earn in the current era, the 21st century. Now, we know that Improving a country's literacy levels by a small amount can have huge positive economic impact. Education also increases the earning potential of workers. An additional year of schooling can improve a person's lifetime wages by 10% or more. Pero again, why is education falling short in preparing students for 21st century knowledge work. So, pasabot raani nga slide is, we have an understanding na from an economic perspective, maayo sa ekonomiya, kung ang mga tao makagraduate. Pero ang problema, na ay lagi 21st century skills gap na ay nag-fall short ang mga educational institutions in preparing students for the 21st century work. As you can see here, sa karong 21st century na work, okay, mas taas, nagtaas ang need for unsa na skills, complex communication and expert thinking. Okay? You can ask friends, cousins, uncles, aunties, they will answer you nga ang importante karon is na akay niche, na akay expertise. Okay? Maugani na dapat when you pursue further education, dapat na ay vertical articulation. Maingon gani kitag vertical articulation, for example, you are studying BS Ed Science. When you pursue for a master's degree, it should be master's degree in science education and then when you decide to pursue phd education you pursue phd science education okay okay kana ang importante expert thinking you have a specialty okay and not only that syempre ang pinakataas karon is you're capable of complex communication communication in written forms in spoken forms communication with various kinds of people or people of various background. Nag-ubos na ang demand for routine manual skills and routine cognitive skills. Unsa man na mga skills, kanang routine, you know, ko. kanang mag-stipleray, mag-sort ng documents, mag-type, mag-transcribe. Why? Because these 
tasks or the kills can be done by robo robots. Okay? Na ay mga artificial intelligence in the corner that can replace um kaning people who do routine manual work and routine cognitive work. Okay? So kaning mga bookkeepers mao ning mga examples assembly line workers truck drivers security guards waiters maids and janitors medyo lesser ang ilang demands na daw karon ang higher demand is or at least ang mga occupations na taas jud ang earning potential is when you become scientists attorneys managers doctors designers software programmers there is a Philippines, for example, kung mahimo kang programmer, information technology officer or something, mahir ka sa DICT, you'll be paid 71000 That is karon ha, as of 2023. Kung scientist, mahimo kang researcher, tag po ng sweldo, tag six digits in the government. Or even in SNSU kanang sa mga public na universities and colleges. So, ang mga mahimong professors mo sweldo ng 120, 140,000. Again, kung ang isa ka tao mag-aim ani ng mga positions on sa may requisites, on sa may requirements. Syempre, abstract problem solving, mental flexi flexibility so, mauni ang mga 21st century skills na kinanglan mo possess. Okay? And the future of 21st century work is this. Kaning mga complex na mga jobs, research, development, design, marketing and sales, global supply chain management, basically creative work, mabuhat na daw siya kasagaran ng more developed countries. Kung magpabilin kita na poor, magpabilin kita na left out sa oba na tong rich na mga neighbor, neighboring countries, kita ang magtrabaho ng routine work nila. Okay? So, sila mga scientist, mag-asawa. ba? For example, mga mag-asawa sa Dubai. Mga scientist, dagkuan mga trabaho. Di na sila mo trabaho ng routine work. Kanang housekeeping. No? Magluto. Magasod ng bata sa balay. So, ending, mag-hire sila rakan ng mga tao na mo perform ng kana ng mga routine work. Di syempre, ah, si Maila Kuhaon na mga employees. E di, mga tao from developing or from less developed countries. So, mauna nga na ay mga graduate ng nursing, graduate ng education, wala magtinarong pag eskwela walay 21st century skills they end up sa kana na mga kinds of occupations no not that less ang kuan ana no less ang value pero lahi ra gihapon tung you're able to thrive there is a let's say only in the Philippines but kanang competitive or competent no or na kay better na job kay kung naajud kay skills na na-develop sa imong pag eskwela dali jud ka makatrabaho og tarong dili ka magkinahanglan og um backer ba we have that mentality na magkinahanglan patag backer para makatrabaho og maayo tinuod na ay mga ingana na mga events diba sab nato na i-deny na mag-exist pero Tibot na ito matinay nga dag high instances where abdik ka na hire ka tungod sa imong kayang buhaton. Okay? Ako, I'm proud to say that. Wala ko'y nahimong backer. And I think ang SNSU generally dili mag-require ng backer at least katong time na, na hire ko. No? That was 2014, 2013, 20 um yeah kato na mga years na you just need to show na naakay tarong na work ethic na akay tarong na professionalism and your students will speak for you i think that's one of the things na 
at least to me, no, akong nakita nga nahitabo na I wasn't that making a lot of noise na kanang coming from me, but my students were saying things about me na, ala, kana, kana on sa kana ilang isulti na they appreciate me daw. And I think that's one of the reasons also that you know, that affected how people viewed me at work. So, yeah, mga, kanak na mga chika. Anyway, what is certain is that in the 21st century work, in the 21st century world of work, two essential skill sets are necessary. First, the ability to quickly acquire and apply new knowledge. Because again, we need knowledge workers. And number two, the technical know-how to apply 21st century skills such as problem solving, communication, teamwork, technology use, innovation, and the rest to each and every work project. Okay. Now, speaking of education in general, ang education we know nga na ashay universal purposes. We want students to be educated because we want them to contribute to work and society. We want them to exercise and develop their personal talents. We want them to fulfill their civic responsibilities and to carry our traditions forward. Pero, I know you realize that how these aims, how these ends are met differs through time. So if we had to take a historical perspective, sa una, tong agrarian life, tinood, important ang education para makakontribute to work and society. Pero, how they handled that purpose of education was, dapat kabayo mo grow ng food for family and others, kabalo mo create ng tools and crafts for basic needs, and participate in the local cottage economy. When it was the industrial age, there was emphasis on urban life, factories. Nagpabilin nga tinuod ang purpose of education nga para ang sudyante contribute to work and society, but that was translated differently as well. No, To serve society through a specialized profession, knowledge work, apply engineering and science to contribute to industrial progress, contribute one piece of a long chain of production and distribution. And karon sa knowledge work, where the emphasis is on these aspects, global markets, telelinked citizens, blended cultures, we need students who are able to contribute to global information. Dili lang sa local economy, dili lang sa local cottage na economy. To innovate new services, to meet needs and solve problems, and participate in the global economy. The same is true for other purposes of education, exercise and develop personal talent. So karon sa knowledge work, sa may kinahanglan, use knowledge tools and technology to, conti to continue learning and developing talents throughout life. So, pero sa una, sa mana, to use tools to create useful artifacts. Sa una, important ra na makabalong basa, musulat, magbilang, patkaron. It's important to enhance personal development with technology-powered knowledge and productivity tools. Dili lang cellphone, but also the various softwares and applications that we can install in our digital devices. The same with this purpose of education, fulfilling civic responsibilities. Sa una, important lang na you're able to help neighbors. No? To contribute to local village needs, mag-gardening, kay para na akay mabaligya ng mga gulay, para diha sa ibong barrio. But karon, it's important to engage globally in issues through online communities and networks. So, the change na siya depende sa panahon. And finally, to carry our traditions forward on sa may mga um, pag-achieve karon sa knowledge age, 
quickly learn traditional knowledge in a field and apply its principles across other fields to create new knowledge and innovations and so on. Feel free to pause the video in case you need more time to read how these purposes of education were carried out through time from agrarian age, industrial age, and in today's knowledge age. Now, we go to the learning forces, the four converging forces that necessitate the need, the, that necessitate 21st century learning. So you might have encountered this terminology already, 21st century learning, but here we are justifying why we need to implement 21st century learning. There are four factors, knowledge work, thinking tools, digital lifestyles, and learning research. The first factor, we have already covered that in the previous slides, that the kind of work that we have right now revolves around expertise, revolves around being able to produce knowledge. Okay, So we need a supply of well-trained workers, workers in teams using brain power not using muscles no ang kinahanglan karon brain power and digital tools to apply skills to their daily work no we need innovators to produce products and services that solve problems in the 21st century world okay so that's why we have these kinds of works right now. No kay knowledge work money, pagka virtual assistant, business process outsourcing. So we have here kaning pagka medical receptionist virtual. Pagka, yeah, kana siya. The second force that necessitates the implementation of 21st century learning is of course the presence of thinking tools. So di ni madinay kaning mga advances in technology no na maoy mahimong part ng toolkit ng knowledge workers kaning computer microchips data storage cloud storage fiber optics and artificial intelligence now we have chat gpt and we don't know what's to come in the future or next week or in the coming weeks next month daghay mga inventions which can be produced anytime and because of these technological inventions no we need 21st century learning so later we'll see how relevant is 21st century learning given this reality na na ay mga mangsulpot na mga technological inventions so maoning mga augmented reality robots 3d cloud computing and so on the third force is the reality of digital lifestyles. Ang mga kabataan karon, the Gen Zs, no? ang ijong mga pag-umangkon, for sure you can see that the kind of life that they're living essentially revolves around being a netizen. Na ano sila YouTube, na sila accounts sa Facebook as early as grade 1, grade 2. These are digital natives. Ako, I started life without such um digital lifestyles while well, i cell phone sa una when i was born no um the first time i had a phone was when i was in high school i think i was third year high school when i asked my mother to give me to buy me a new phone pero karon as early as 1 year old 2 years old 3 years old children are already able to have presence in digital spaces. No? Pero, yeah, again, the bottom line is because our lifestyles have changed, we need to change the manner of doing education. Okay? So, na ay mga dagay issues that we can hear na ang mga bata daw karon wala na ibatasan, di na daw ma I'm sure you have received comments like that. Uh, mga gen Z na mga students, wala yung mga batasan, mga bulok, kaayo, wala na common sense and so on. Ako usual na ako na answer ana sa mga teachers, though 
ang ako to bagana is in my head only because it can be harsh for them to hear my comment. Ang akong mahisulti ana probably ang ilang students budlay sa ilang klase, walay batasan sa ilang klase because ang ilang pamaagi of educating is the traditional way. Okay? Lisod makig kompetensya sa digital na world karon. So kung ikaw si teacher, kung di gid kakabalo mag-integrate ng technology in the classroom, you will always have a negative remark on your students. No? So para ma-manage na siya, dapat kilayon jud kinsa imong learners. Ang imong learners netizens, digital natives. And so, kay digital natives man, ipanghatag na sa ila ang learning. Hala, ipaagi. Kay gana sila mag-YouTube. Hala, mag-lecture ka sa YouTube. Diba? Anyway, that's me. Ambot lamang sa uban on sa ilang teaching philosophies. The fourth learning force is the advances in learning research. I'm sure nakabati na mo na ang philosophy karon, particularly in the Philippines or all over the world is na ajoy necessity for us to adapt learner-centered teaching. Ang kaning learner-centered teaching on sa iboti pasabot, if we had to put this simply, we emphasize on competencies. Competency-based siya. So, we focus not on what students can memorize, dili. we focus on what students can do, what skills can they develop. It's not about kanang, dagan sila na learn na mga knowledge. No. Kana yud ang mistake diha. It's not about gaining a lot of knowledge, lots of knowledge, but it's about gaining skills. Okay? That's why we emphasize on active learning and social learning. Because we believe that knowledge are knowledge builders. Silay mag-form, mag-construct ng ilang understanding of the world. And we use tasks for teaching. We do authentic learning. We, do, we give real-world problems for them to solve. And also, daghan pai at lessons from educational psychology. For example, in the psychology of motivation, we have an emerging theory now, theory by Desi and Ryan, the self determination theory, saying that ang classroom, mahimo siyang boring, mahimo siyang sad na classroom if walay support for basic psychological needs. So sa una, na alang tay Maslow, hierarchy of needs for food, security, love and belongingness, and so on. Today, there is an alternative perspective that students need autonomy. They need freedom. They need choice-making opportunities. Also, they need feedback for them to develop their competence. Yes. They need to know how. They need to have opportunities to practice. They need to experience success. Para makaingon sila nga, they have mastered something. And then lastly, they need to feel involved. They need to feel that they belong. They need to feel accepted that they are part of the community. So, mauna, mukunek gihapon dito nga, Social learning, active learning, always bring groups together in the learning process. So together, kaning upat na mga factors, knowledge work, thinking tools, digital lifestyles, learning research, they all provide the foundation for 21st century learning or they justify the need for us to implement 21st century learning. The problem is na ay mga resistance, there are forces which are preventing educators to implement 21st century learning. Unsa man eh, number one, old policies designed to deliver mass education. 
I'm sure you're not strangers to this. In the end, na ay unwritten na rules na dapat walay bagsak. Pasartanan. Ginoo ko kakoiba. Kung pasartanan, regardless of skills nga na-develop, ang bata mas hindi makabasa, maka grade 2, maka grade 3, hangtod na abot sa high school, dili makabasa, abot sa college, dili makabasa. So remember I had a student. Imagine I had a student before ha na first year college, second year college, di makabasa. Moingon na sila, actually makabasa ang bata on the surface na perspective no. Makabasa siya like like kaning texts karon sa slide. Mabasa niya forces that make 20th century learning difficult, etc. Kaya niya mo basa, mo read literally, but remember, ang comprehension is part of reading skills. Na ako yung mga sudyante na pabasahon na ako ng isa ka sentence, duha ka sentence, dili makasabot. That is still being a non-reader. Nga man, niabot man nag second year college. Niabot man nag nakasulod man nag university. Nga wala man ay mga learning skills. Okay? Probably that's because of lagi ka ng mga policies na to nga papasaron horot. Or even the rest sa uh, university level, papasaron kay scholar. Sayang ang scholarship kaloy sa bino ako. Pwede ba dya? Hang yun na makapasar kay scholar. So unsaman ang scholarship, gihimo lang o livelihood. No? Gihimo lang na source of income. So, proud ay ka nga scholar ka tapos di ka kabalo. Pwede di ay na. Anyway, other practices that prevent the implementation of 21st century learning is standardized testing on content courses such as national achievement tests. Heavy reliance on direct instruction. There's nothing wrong with direct instruction. Walay mali ang kanang si teacher mo tindog in front of the class mag yaw yaw mag lecture mag lecture even right now i'm doing lecture pero mahimong problematic siya kung nagrely ra kan tanan classroom experiences puro lecture 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 ang ubang teachers gina justify na dili mako ga lecture students man ang ga lecture ga promote kog independent learning so na ay gagamit ng student reporting pero that is in the guise of being learner centered. Kung sa may na learn sa mga sujante anang student reporting, nagmemorize naman ang student, ang mga classmates pod ana wala man pod totally na mati. So nagreporting si teacher naglingkuray ra sa kilid. So kung sa may yung mga na learn ana wala may follow up mag-quiz, edi, nag-memorize. The next day, nakalimtan. So, wala. What's the bottom line? What's the experience? What's the point? What's the meaning ng kanang pag-eskwila? Sigira, memorize. Again, it's the age of knowledge. Knowledge is accessible. Na ay internet, na ay chat GPT, na ay cellphone, smartphones. Kung na atay makalimtan, is ka pindot na sa cellphone, ma-access na ang information. That's why, dili na important kaayo ang pag-learn ng knowledge. Ang importante is ang pag-learn ng skills for processing information para mahimong expert, para makaproduce ng own knowledge. Okay? Also, na ay ubang practices, kaning ikaupat, fascination on the use of textbooks and modules. So na yung mga teacher, sala sige, pagkahatag ng modules, o oh, mauna, humana. Tapos na ang istorya. Teachers who prioritize content but not competencies that have to be developed by students. And lastly, kaning the preferences of parents who, when they were children, ni agi man sila ng traditional ra na approaches and karon na adults na daw sila moingon sila na so sa una gani 
pangbunayan ra among mga kamot, magsulat kami ng sa papel back to back na himo maming successful karon. There are adults who are like that, diba? Gina-justify nila na dapat ibalik ang sa una ng mga practices kay effective. But no, it will never work. Katong mga nag-work sa una, nag-work siya because that was valid during that time. Atong na-mention earlier, ang lifestyle ng mga sadyante karon digital lifestyle. So kung ang classroom walay any form of digital walay digital aspects sa classroom never jud ma-achieve ang 21st century learning. Okay? Anyway, the key here is to shift practices toward a new balance leaning more to the right. So, mauni ang balance. So, again, ako na-mention, walay mali sa direct instruction, being teacher-directed, focus on knowledge. Actually, okay ra pod, no? To some extent, mag-focus man ta sa subject. Mag-learn gihapon ta ng mga formula in math, kaning mga concepts in science, other things. But, there's obviously a need to reinvent teaching and learning for the 21st century by making it leaning towards the right side. So, present nga happening, teacher-directed instruction pababa, learning for school, summative test, and so on. Pero, dapat mas daghan ang learner-centered, interactive exchange, skills, process, applied skills, questions and problems, practice projects, personalized instruction, on-demand instruction, collaborative instruction, global community, web-based formative evaluations, and learning for life. Okay? So, let's say, in my classroom, usually, oh, naagyapon ko yung lecture. Na, this is direct instruction. I'm giving you this content, no? Kanina mga presentation. So, ang students passive. So, we're not totally erasing kanina mga traditional na mga forms of teaching and learning. Pero we need to minimize them. Dapat mas daghan na ang mga authentic tasks. Mas daghan ang mga activities. Magda mas daghan ang active learning na mga opportunities. Social learning opportunities. Because those are the opportunities na ang mga bata makadevelop ng skills for life in the 21st century. Okay? So, to wrap up, the top challenge of the 21st century is to prepare our students when you become educators in the future. This is something that you have to be mindful all the time. You prepare your students to contribute to the world of work and civic life, which can be done by helping them to apply 21st century skills and have a solid understanding of core subjects to the challenges of our times. Okay, so mauna, oh, na ay gihapoy subjects. So, ma dapat makabalog gihapon o grammar, makabalog gihapon o itong mga theories and concepts, but again, na ay primacy on applying 21st century skills. Now, let's have an intermission. You may pause the video. If you're tired of listening, here's a question for you to think about what 21st century learning is and what teachers have to do about it. Okay? So, yeah, you may pause this video and watch for later. But I'm going to continue. Now, this time, we are in the second half of the presentation that is we move on to frameworks developed for 21st century skills. So, ay ng mga skills. The term 21st century skills is not new. Okay? Naana na siya for so long. Kadtong before pa ng year 2000. Okay? So, yeah. In 1996, 
Kaning UNESCO's Bellors Report, issued by the International Commission on Education for the 21st Century, analyzed developmental trends of the century and recommended that education be built upon four pillars. Learning to know, learning to live together, learning to do, and learning to be. I remember my time sa SNSU before naghandal ko og values education nga subject and this was the framework that I used in delivering values education na kinahanglan kung i-develop ang estudyante para ready sa 21st century na akay learning to know kanang learning skills learning to live together mga social skills learning to do mga hard skills skills that are needed by industries and companies right now and learning to be that is personal development now that was in 1996 pa na framework many other frameworks have subsequently been established no ni sunod after sa kaning four pillars of learning. We don't use four pillars of learning anymore kay laong pa obsolete naman siya. 1996 pa gani. So, ang mga na-inspire na mga frameworks, grabe kadaghan. So, you can see here the list. Ang European Union, OECD, US, Japan, Australia, Scotland, England, Northern Ireland, and so on. Even the Philippines na ay kaugalingong framework for 21st century skills. No? So, basi mag-wonder. Basi mag-mangota na kamo ang Philippines dili ipod magpahuli, syempre. Now, in this presentation, we will cover, though briefly lang ning uban, the OECD framework published in 2009, the ATCS framework published in 2012, and the famous P21 framework published in 2009. These are international frameworks, meaning these are frameworks produced by other countries. And, syempre, as much as possible, this is what I intend to do all the time in my presentations to have some touch of the local realities we will touch ako nagsadig yun taraw ko unsa may pog unsa man pod ang framework nga naa sa Philippines basic education sa DepEd so i have found those frameworks and naatay framework nga na publish tong 2009 pod okay when the K to 12 conceptual framework was produced and in 2022 na I update and I was happy when I saw this framework of competencies and aspirations for Filipino learners that's by DepEd and then the Matatag curriculum na sugda next year 2004 to 2005 no na, na school year though we are ay, 2024 na di ay karon Yes, so later on we'll see how the Matatag curriculum considers 21st century skills. Now, let's begin briefly with the OECD framework. Ana Nyadu and Claro in 2009 examined and reviewed the effects of ICT on young people from OECD countries. What were what are these countries? Australia, Austria, Belgium and so on. And they found out na tungod aning presence of ICT technologies to um the educational system has to emphasize these three skills communication skills information skills ethics and social impacts okay so mauna ang ilang 21st century skills na gi-propose tulo ka buok Now, if you are interested to know unsaning tulo, communication, information, ethics, and social impact, I invite you to access this material. This was the complete research report of Ana Niado and Claro published in 2009. Okay? So, dilit na siya kaayo covered sa atong presentation. At least now, aware lang mo nga mauni ang terminologies sa 21st century skills in other countries. 
Also in 2012, an international research initiative had headquartered at the University of Melbourne and sponsored by Cisco, Intel, and Microsoft. Ang research group, they identified and helped learners acquire the necessary skills needed to be successful in the 21st century workplace. And they suggested the following 21st century skills, ways of thinking, ways of working, tools for working, and living in the world. Morag na similarity sa learning to be, learning to live together, learning to do, and learning to think. No? Na similarity ana si Jadiha. Similarly, if you are interested to know unsaning upat kabuok, I invite you to access this material. This is open access. You can access this work by Griffin, published in 2012, na ang ilang complete research report. Ako nagbasa ko ani and some of the information from this na sa inina presentation are taken from this book. Now let's go to the P21 framework, the famous framework, the most popular. Partnership for the 21st century or the P21 um, is an American organization founded in 20, 2002, formed by business leaders, consultants, and educators. They, they conceptualized a framework for 21st century skills and popularly these are learning and innovation skills, information, media, and technology skills, life, and career skills. What's good about this framework is there is an inclusion of support system like standards, assessments, curriculum, instruction, professional development, and learning environments, which have to be present in order for the 21st century skills be successfully integrated into instruction. Kana siya wala magud na sa other frameworks. So maone siya ako na mention. You can read at the bottom standards and assessment, curriculum and instruction, professional development and learning environments which are foundations but ipasabot these have to be present first and foremost. These have to be stable, have to be put up in any educational system. Present ang maayo nga curriculum, ang mga maestra skilled put ang mga maestra before we can think of 21st century skills integrated in instruction. Okay? Kay dili man pwede sige ra kita dere istorya ng 21st century skills dapat ma-integrate sa instruction pero ang ato mga maestra dili gani magklase or dili gani kabalo mo himo ng lesson plan. Kuya hmm? one. Okay. This framework is also known as the knowledge and skills rainbow. So kung imo si jang i-compare the katong three international frameworks, kaning learning and innovation skills would align to communication under the OECD framework and ways of thinking and ways of working under the ATCS uh, framework. Information, media, and technology skills information put under OECD framework and tools for working and so on. So may buti masabot ani. So ato ra han gilaktawan ng OECD and ATCS tungod kay they're very much similar to the P21 framework ng mga skill sets. So mauni atong isa-isahon the P21 framework, the 21st century skills as viewed using the lens of the P21 framework. The Partnership for 21st Century Learning is developed to help practitioners take note of the term, integrate skills into the teaching of key academic subjects. But it's still important for educational systems to have the usual, to have the traditional subject areas like math, science, um, values education, and what else? social studies, the key here is we need as educators, as practitioners to integrate these, the teaching of these skills as we teach major or key academic subjects. Okay? It describes the skills, knowledge, and expertise students must master to succeed in work and life. Okay? So, 
every 21st century skills implementation requires development of key academic subject knowledge and understanding among all students. Ako nang emphasize po na, again, there's a requirement to develop subject matter expertise. So for example, if you are a psychology graduate, kung ni-graduate ang estudyante ng BS Psychology, first and foremost, dapat expert siya sa theories in psychology. Okay? Sa inyo po na case, when you are a graduate of, when you become a graduate of BS Ed or BPED or BED or BTVTED, it's a normal expectation from people na kamo, kabalo mo ng theories and concepts in education. Kabalo mo ang learner-centered teaching, kabalo mo ang constructivism and other related theories and theories in the field of education. And apila na ka ng specialization if you have specialization. Okay? Pero again, on top of that, diha dapat masingit, ma-integrate C, 21st century skills. So in the, T in the P21 framework, these are the key subjects, English reading, language arts, world languages, and so on. You can pause to read the entire list. In addition to these subjects, educators must promote understanding of academic content at much higher levels by, take note of the term, weaving. 21st century interdisciplinary themes into key subjects. But ipasabot, as we teach these key subjects, we weave into 21st century interdisciplinary themes. Kung sa malina mga themes, lima kabuok, that is if we consider the P21 framework. These are global awareness, financial literacy, civic literacy, health literacy, environmental literacy. But ipasabot ani kung mag-teach kitag English, for example, you become an English teacher or when you become a science teacher, you find as much as possible opportunities. You take the opportunities to integrate these themes in your instruction. Okay? Dapat mauni ang tema. Daong pa. So kung sa cellphone pa, di ba, murag themes, background, so murag ang mood. So when someone prepares a lesson, dapat present, evident ni ang any of these themes. Kung kafalo po siya ng P21 framework. So let's say in your case, kung naamoy lesson plan ng science teacher, present ba ang any of these themes? Gapromote ba? Gi-integrate ba ang environmental literacy? Or health literacy? Or civic literacy? or financial literacy, or global awareness, kung wala, that might be questionable in as far as the P21 framework is concerned. Okay? You can read the definitions of these literacy themes. I will leave the definitions for you, to you. Now, considering the rainbow now, uh, there are 10 components categorized in three skill sets. Kabalo na taon sa tong skill sets, life and career uh, life and career skills, learning and innovation skills, maone ang four C's, critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and creativity, and something that is also a necessity, kaning information, media, and technology skills. So sa ito makita, na sa inner, na, na, sa inner, part ng rainbow ka ng green, makita ninyo ang key subjects or the three R's. Ang samang three R's, the fundamental functional literacy ka ng able to read, write, and do arithmetic. Okay? And the 21st century themes. So again, nakasapaw ra tong tulo ka skill sets because they are meant to be integrated while the teacher, the practitioner is teaching, delivering key subject instruction. Okay? So, daghan, 10 components. So, unsa mani, we'll go over them quickly para kita madali. Feel free to pause the video if you need to read more in detail. Speaking of creativity, that means thinking creatively, 
work creatively with others and implement innovations. Critical thinking and problem solving, syempre, we're speaking of reasoning effectively. How can teachers support that? Siguro by use of debating, by use of argumentation, by asking students questions, or by giving students opportunities to solve problems. No? Communication and collaboration, that simply means being able to communicate clearly. And syempre, dili lang kung clarity of speech, but also accuracy in speech using written, oral, nonverbal communication. Appeal na po deha ang listening, syempre. No? And then, you know to communicate for various purposes. Information literacy, part of knowledge literacy or technology literacy, Kanang being able to access and evaluate information when you ask your students to research on a particular topic, your students are able to know unsa na mga sites ang ilang bisitahon and unsa na mga sites ang ang gahatag ng tinuod reliable nga information. And aside from that ability to access and evaluate information, students also part of information literacy when they're able to use and manage information. Media literacy, analyzing various forms of media. Kanang print messages, kanang video, or kung asa manggali na ng mga sources of media. And also create media products. So common kaayo ang magpaproduce ng video, which is a media product, and apply technology effectively. What else? Flexibility and adaptability, adapt to change and be flexible, initiative and self-direction, meaning time management and working independently, social and cross-cultural skills, which means interacting effectively with others and work effectively in diverse teams, which can be rehearsed in class. So, kanang teachers nga garilay kaayos sa group work. Pero take note, dili necessary dili pod magarantiya na ma-practice ang collaborative skills social skills ng students kung pahi pataka ra si teacher ng group work so you know it requires structure na ay mga templates na ay mga guides so for example kanang ma bijaan na nimo ang mga estudyante na magtrabaho on a certain project kung wala poy mga guide questions wala poy healthy na collaboration na mahitabo because students are confused as to what to do and what to deliver. Productivity and accountability, leadership and responsibility, and so on. Okay? Now, to make it simple for everybody, we summarize it in this manner. Trilling and Fadel in 2009 have rearranged and condensed those 21st century skills in the P21 framework into this formula, the three R's by seven C's. Masama ng tong three R's, kadtong core competencies in the key subjects, reading, writing, arithmetic, and the seven C's. Dili na kong four C's. So, on summoning seven C's, critical thinking and problem solving, part of learning and innovation, creativity and innovation, part of learning and innovation skills, collaboration, teamwork and leadership, cross-cultural understanding, part siya ng life and career skills, appeal ng career and learning self-reliance, part ng life and career skills. Kaning doha, communication and media literacy, computing and ICT fluency, part ng kadtong digital literacy na skill set. Okay. Now, remember, ako na mention ini awa ah earlier, the success of integrating twenty first century literacy literacy themes and skills in the teaching of key subject areas, na sa condition. Ano sa mga condition? Again, dapat in place ang standards and assessments, curriculum and instruction, professional development for teachers, and the supportive learning environment. So kung ang inyong principal later when you become teachers na, ikaw, idealistic ka na teacher, kay bagong hire ka, bagong graduate, ganahan ka na mag-integrate ng 21st century skills sa iyong instruction, pero wala ganay feedback or sama ng other forms of parang toxic work environment, dilagihapon mahimong successful ang pag-implement ng 21st century skills or 21st century learning.
Okay? Okay, na asya requisites. Now, let's go to the local frameworks. Frameworks that are adapted by the Philippines Department of Education. Though quickly lang ini siya, in 2009, policy guidelines on the K-12 basic education program was released via Deped Order No. 21. Kung sa may nahitabo, add to. So, kaninga framework sa ijo makita, can you see the 21st century skills being integrated? In fairness, naasay ka itong mga foundational requirements na similar dito sa P21 framework. So, sa may naadere, naapod siya, can you read in the framework kaning curriculum support system, societal support, family support, instructional support, administrative support. So, kana daw dapat present para on say ultimate goal, kanang blue. The ultimate goal is for every learner to become a whole person. And for that to happen, kinahanglan ma-integrate ang four skill sets. First, kanang green, information, media, and technology skills. Second, kanang orange, learning and innovation skills. Life and career skills, violet. And the red one, effective communication skills. So kung sa P21 framework na ay tulok a skill sets in the Philippines K-12 curriculum, ang 21st century skills well integrated pero for ka skill sets. Kung sa man ang core subjects, Language, Technology and Livelihood Education, Math and Science, Arts and Humanities. Okay? So, medyo weird lamang siya lang tawon kay um, kuan siya na sa outside na ng circle ang core subjects. Anyway, kamo na yung mag-analyze ana kay naapoy own interpretation na man sa, sa DepEd order. Kani also taken, for, taken online um this is how 21st century skills are integrated. So, na ay kaning mga support system. Teachers, supportaan, materials, facilities, and equipment, ICT environment, and so on. Kaning pag-teach ng learning areas, itong upat, language, DLE, math and science, arts and humanities, they should come with the teaching of 21st century skills. Again, what those 21st century skills are are the following. Information, media, and technology skills, learning and innovation skills, communication skills, and life and career skills. Okay? So that students become whole persons. No? Holistically developed Filipinos with 21st century skills. So, di ba? Grabe dyan sila ka literal and clear nga na ajoy 21st century skills dere sa curriculum nato okay so mao nang itsura information media and technology skills and so on now in 2022 ang DepEd nag-adapt ng basic education plan for the year 2030 Na a framework, which is a framework that you will appreciate, I'm sure. Framework of competencies and aspirations for Filipino learners. It's a little bit of updating sa framework ng K-12 curriculum. In this case, mas mag-emphasize, gibalik, gikonsider ang katong core values ng DepEd. Kung sa manto ng mga values, makajos, makatao, makakalikasan, at makabansa. So, Kanang makita ninyo sa ito nga, mauna ang core, meaning main, na buti pa sa bot at all times, di jud na mawala. Maka-Diyos, makatao, makakalikasan, and makabansa. On top of that, ang 21st century skills. Present, we have ang four skill sets. Learning and innovation skills, information, media, and technology skills, life and career skills, and communication skills. And karon. Filipino learners who have the four core values and the four skill sets of the 21st century skills, they should be directed towards the following aspirations. Economic prosperity, competitiveness, national identity and nationhood, flourishing, social political stability, unity and diversity, sustainability. Last year, or last two years, no, when I 
was able to access this framework when I as when I was able to read the report, I was curious. Ano man nag-release man ang DepEd ng kaninga framework, nag-make sense lang siya actually to me because actually wala ko nagbasa sa entire report no sa need for such a framework. Ang ako lang impression that time kay siguro it was a new administration and there was a need to update programs so we appreciate changes no in the framework so maayo ni nga gibalik ang katong four core values and so on pero my question during that time was what will happen now to the K to 12 curriculum na wala man dito ang values education dito sa K to 12 curriculum dili man clear or i don't know kung giung support pag work out ang values education in the you know in the katong 2009 nga um, K to 12 curriculum karon nag make sense ya yeah, sa matatag curriculum kay to tell you honestly ang nahitabo karon kay ako manggibasa taraw ang matatag curriculum na mga guidance notes gi-combine lang ang kani K to 12 curriculum and kaning aspirations okay Kay ang matatag curriculum, murag enhanced naman po siya nga K-12 curriculum. Wala man po sila ni layo kaayo sa kanang existing na curriculum. So ila lang gireduce ang load. Tinuod, gireduce lang ang mga competencies na kinahanglan ma-target. Ako naman, ang ako perspective actually is ari sa 21st century skills. Unsay nahitabo giun sa pagtrato ang 21st century skills in the present curriculum in DepEd kaning the matatag curriculum take note kaning matatag curriculum DepEd ni ha kung ari kita sa university wala kita dili kita under sa DepEd so lahi atong mga curriculum anyway if you wish to read the full report you can refer to DepEd Order 214 published in 2022, the Basic Education Plan for 2030. Now, here's another issue once. Gireleased lang ni last September 8, 2003. The Matatag Curriculum Pilot Implementation, which shall begin on school year 2024-2025. Magsugod na siya. Okay, phase 1 of implementation. And akong gi-highlight na ang sari kasakana nga DepEd order or DepEd memorandum. The Matatag curriculum has the following features. Decongested curriculum. Focus on foundational skills. Foundational literacies. Balanced cognitive demands. And I highlight for you. Clearer articulations of 21st century skills. Tinuod kay... Kung mulantaw ta sa K-12 curriculum, wala jud gidefine on sa tong upat ka skill sets. Okay? Karon, there is a matatag curriculum, kaning mga issuances, mga documents na gina-share ng DepEd karon for the matatag curriculum na anay clearer articulation on sa tong upat ka skill sets. Okay? Pero, as you will see later, Morag sa kakla, morag sa grabe ka specific, morag libog na siya later, I'll show you. So, the matatag curriculum, maon ni iyang kaning, unsan ni? Kaning iyang acronym. Make the curriculum relevant, take steps to accelerate and so on, take good care of learners and give support to teachers to teach better. So, maon ni ang mga subject areas. Now, take note. In that issuance, kanang 2023 na issuance, ijo mabasa, the vision of the DepEd remains the same. That is to produce holistically developed Filipino learners with 21st century skills. Give mention pagani ang DepEd Order 21 of 2019. Okay, so nagpabilin gihapon. The development of such skills coupled with the department's core values, makajos, makatao, makakalikasan, and makabansa, will allow learners to realize aspirations that represent their ideals and ambitions. Motong ako na mention earlier nga there was a combination of kadong the K to 12 curriculum na framework how 21st century skills were integrated in the curriculum plus. Core values ng DepEd. 
The 21st century skills refer to, take note, maunay ang definition ng DepEd, the ability to gather, manage, use, synthesize, evaluate, and create information through media and technology. Now, I add, para mas mahimong klaro, to create information through different modes of media and technology. Okay, daghan may modes of media. Media in the form of visual media, gestural media, no? pictorial media. So, daghan. The detailed 21st century skills framework comprises the same four domains as originally set out in the Depth and Order Number 21 issued in 2019. The same. Okay, information, media, and technology skills, and so on. Filipino learners would develop these 21st century skills in addition to foundational literacy and numeracy skills and discipline-specific skills and competencies, for example, scientific literacy. So, balik ta gamay kadali sa the P21 framework. Kung sa giingon sa P21 framework, mag-teach gihapon ng core subjects, main subject areas, i-integrate lang sa 21st century skills. Actually, the same ang spirit ng matatag curriculum. Ipa-develop gihapon ng 21st century skills, but these are additional requirements. I-teach gihapon na ay dapat prime importance on foundational literacy and numeracy skills and discipline-specific skills and competencies. Kung sa maling discipline-specific, kanang specific sa math, specific sa science, specific sa English, and other disciplines. Okay? So, mauni ang breakdown. So, mauni akong giingon earlier. Murag, clearer articulation daw ng 21st century skills. So, inyong makita sa karong matatag curriculum na mga documents, gi-breakdown na matod on sa maning information, media, and technology skills. Surprisingly, grabe kadaghan, sa P21 framework, duha lang man eh. Pero, there is a depth ed sa matatag curriculum, ginoo ko lima kabuok. Visual literacy, information literacy, media literacy, technology literacy, and digital literacy. Ako nakamuing nandaan karon if you are curious learners, imo isearch ang mga definition aning lima kabuok, kaning na mga literacy areas, literacy skills, you will see nga nag-overlap ni na mga literacy skills. Why am I raising that? Mahimo siyang problematic when teachers will have to implement that in lesson planning. Kay pwede mo ingon siya, kane media literacy pero digital literacy di ay to, which cannot be, which can be understandable kay lagi overlapping man siya. So I will leave that assignment to you to investigate na unsa diri ang mga mag ang mag overlap. Okay? Kaning learning and innovation skills, kung ato kita sa P21 framework na ay tolo or pila ba ito kabuok. But in this case, pila kabuok, one o lima kabuok. Creativity, openness, openness, medyo weird ini for me to read, to be honest with you. Kay when someone is creative, the person is open to new ideas. So, sa may kalainan aning creativity and openness, kaman is separate man ang openness. So, Ambot on sa ona ng dep and pagpasabot sa mga teachers. Critical thinking, problem solving, and reflective thinking. That's also one of my issues. Pero anyway, mao na mani na issue na manila. I don't know how dep ed will make teachers understand. Or kamo, you will become future teachers. Many of you will be part of dep ed. You will sure encounter how these skills will be defined and operationalized. Kaning communication skills, very broad. Just ko, grabe kadaghan ng mga categories. Teamwork, collaboration. So you can see here, Dayon, ano man, separate man si teamwork and collaboration. What's the difference? There are books nga nag-ingon, similar siya, pareho lang siya. So ano man, separate man. Diba? So I don't know how they operationalize on say basihan interpersonal skills, intrapersonal skills, interactive communication. 
So, sa may kalainan, aning interactive communication sa interpersonal skills? I don't know. Nonverbal communication? Okay. Communicating in diverse environments? Okay. Now, I'm trying to make you problematize the curriculum. Okay? That's how you practice critical thinking. You always question. You don't just accept and accept. Okay? Kung naamoy chance, you try to criticize. Kay, syempre, para po, you know, matabangan ng uban to improve kung unsa may galing kinanglan i-improve. Pero syempre, you should come from valid points. Kaning domain for life and career skills na ay lima, informed decision making, adaptive leadership, intercultural understanding, self-discipline, future orientation, resilience, and adversity management. Wala kaayo kay problema ani ng mga categories, pero kaning intercultural understanding, I'm sure medyo mag-conflict na sa uban, like kani, communicating in diverse environment. So, again, my issue is overlaps sa pag-categorize ng um, 21st century skills. Karon, I also looked for 21st century themes. So, di ba, kung magdumdum ka mo sa P21 framework, there were five themes. Global awareness, financial literacy, civic literacy. Ang sa patong isa? I forgot. Basta ka financial literacy, health literacy, and I forgot the fifth one. There is a matatag curriculum in fairness. Ganahan ko because I was able to see themes kung unsa ang 21st century na mga tema ang kinahanglan present daw sa science lessons. So, kani ako nakuha from their issuances. Dapat ang tema mag-focus sa reduction and management of risks and disaster, fighting against climate change, environmental protection and conservation, sustainable development of resources and energy, and comprehensive sexuality education. So, buti po sabot, for example, kung mag-istorya na kamog atoms, mag-istorya na kamo ng conservation of energy, kung sa mga mga topics, science, as teachers, as science teachers, you need to integrate kanina mga themes. Okay? Kanina po nilang gihatag. Atong English, akong gilantaw, medyo dili klaro for me. That's why I have indicated here vague. Kay ingun siya, social issues, maura. Mugamit daw ng social issues ang English teachers sa pag-discuss ng padtong or sa pag-deliver ng competencies for English. Kani ang nakapait, naglantaw ko sa PE na issue once, walay gisulti onsa. Siguro given na kay health literacy, kay part mo na ng mape, pero still I think there's a need to clearly articulate on the document unsa tong 21st century skill. So you see, dili the same ang quality ng mga issuances for the matatag curriculum. Siguro gana kung sa science curriculum, klaro, dag high tema kung unsay pwede buhaton. But as to other subject areas, medyo problematic because we don't know or we're not clear wala uniform na order as to what themes should teachers consider in planning lessons. Sa JMRC and Values Education, ila pong gimension dito ang civic literacy, global awareness, and multicultural literacy. And sa edu edukasyong pangtahanan, kaning ETP, TLE, um, nag-mention po siya na pwede ma-integrate ang comprehensive sexuality education, disaster risk reduction and management, and so on. And kaning social studies, araling panlipunan, kaning po ang themes na iyang na-mention, people, society, and environment, time, continuity, and change, and so on. I appreciate these subject areas kay klaro kaayo ang 21st century themes. Now, I will share with you my thoughts because again, this is something new for that Edman kaning mag-implement sila ng revised na K-12 curriculum, kaning matatag curriculum. Ang akong critique is on how they consider 21st century skills. Ako na na-mention earlier, some skills, competencies, values, and attributes are overlapping. To me, that's that's a problem. Tungod kay, 
maglisod man si teacher pag operationalize, pag reflect didto sa lesson plan. It might create confusion instead of clarity for everybody. So example for me, that's this is confusing kaning reflective thinking and intrapersonal skills. These are similar skills, overlapping skills. Visual literacy and media literacy to tell you our chapter 2 will cover multi literacies part ta inisya ng isa ka literacy set of literacy skills. So ang bot on say basis nga no separate sa visual literacy and media literacy. Teamwork, collaboration, and interactive communication. These terminologies are also very similar. And creativity and openness, the one I mentioned earlier. Na part man ang openness sa creativity. If you read about creativity, complex ang creativity and one of kanang minor skill or part ng in complete set of creativity skills ang openness. So nga man, separate man ang openness. Are they different na murag pareho raman? So again, I don't know on sa ilang gibasihan nga no separate And also another critique, unclear 21st century themes in some subject areas. Mautong pag-teach sa English, pag-teach ng PE, on sa man ang mga specific 21st century. And also, kani also ako po na share yata sa akong students last year na Naatay mga newer forms of literacies. AI literacy is an important aspect of literacy. Kung kamo reader mo ng mga ongoing research works ng mga practitioners around the world, ijo makita nga na anay demand for integrating literacy for artificial intelligence. Kay ang artificial intelligence is here to stay. That's part of our life now. Di na siya ma-erase. Asa man ang AI literacy sa kana nga framework. Asa man ato siya ma-insert. Okay? Di man siya media literacy. Di man siya visual literacy. Okay? Now, overlap or competition with values, education, and GMRC. So, medyo lisod pud ni siya ma-appreciate kay yeah i mean kung mubalik man gud sa P21 framework ang life and career skills murag na aided to mga values no good manners right conduct so there is atong framework lahi si GMRC lahi si makajos makabayan makatao makabansa remember kung makakalikasan part na siya ng environmental literacy na inyo nang na-mention dito sa science curriculum. ba diba? So, asa man na dapit na nagdoble-doble naman. I hope you appreciate my critique. Still appears like a mere listing of skills mixing up with attributes. Now, karon as future educators, because gusto ko akong students, critical thinkers, I invite you to critique the matatag curriculum. Okay, again, if you will join the Department of Education, you'll be the persons to implement the curriculum and it's good to criticize it as early as now. Okay, para sa ka mo ma-prepare or, you know, ma-practice na ninyo. Anyway, we'll have exercises or tasks in relation to the Matatag curriculum. That's how updated our subject is. Okay, now to summarize... In this video, we have covered the 21st century as the world, as the era of knowledge, the four converging forces for 21st century learning, the resistance against 21st century learning, the various frameworks developed for 21st century skills, the P21 framework, and the local frameworks adopted by our very own Department of Education. As a take-home lesson, there's a critical need for classrooms to foster 21st century skills such as critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, communication, and digital literacy within students to prepare them for the challenges and opportunities of the future. What's yours? What's your take-home lesson? I invite you to also reflect no, on what are your take-home lessons after listening 
for watching this lecture video. Thank you so much for listening. This has been Sir Monch of Surigao del Norte State University. It's my pleasure to deliver this presentation to you. And I hope this has been a meaningful spending of time for you. I will leave you these questions and prepare if you are my students to be asked of these questions. That's all and have a wonderful day.